The trumpeter swan is a really neat success story. They went extinct in the sand hills. Trumpeter swans are really good indicator species of the habitat quality. They're a big, beautiful white bird that is an icon of the Nebraska sand hills. The sand hills is still one of the last remaining intact grasslands left in the world. This is probably one of the few places where private industry, private ranchers have improved the land. I hope that I always get to make my life here in the sand hills. They're huge and they're heavenly white. A trumpeter swan actually is the largest waterfowl species in the world, and they're beautiful. They're birds that are indicators of good water quality. They need big, open grasslands and wetlands and open bodies of water in order to thrive. We really don't know a lot about them, about their behavior. It's really fun to learn about them. My name is Heather Johnson, and I'm uh, researching trumpeter swans in the Nebraska sand hills at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. I'm also a wildlife biologist with Nebraska Game and Parks studying waterfowl. So historically, trumpeter swans breeding range ranged all the way up in Alaska and the boreal forest, and then the sand hills was the very south tip of that breeding range. And populations were upwards probably about half a million to a million. The fur trade industry played a large role in the depletion of the population of trumpeter swans. Their down feathers on their belly was very desired for women's powder puffs. The feathers were desired for clothing and hats and quill pens. In fact, Audubon himself preferred a quill pen for his drawings. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act is what saved these birds in 1918. Had that treaty been not put into place, we would not have trumpeter swans today. Nebraska sand hills was a, was a core of their range, and they were wiped out of the sand hills, wiped out in Nebraska, and then through conservation laws and a lot of conservation efforts over the last hundred years, trumpeter swans have started to come back. We take an airboat out. We run up next to these birds and gently scoop them up with a big old scoop net. And then we bring them back. And then collect what we call body condition data. And that's how you can determine how healthy a bird is. And over the last three years, we've been putting on GPS satellite collars. So we've been tracking these swans. And we're looking at where they're going in the winter. Um, let's take her back down. We're trying to get a handle on the population numbers, and not necessarily just the numbers, but the trends, if they're going up or going down. And what we have been seeing, actually, over the years is we've seen an increasing population. So the overall number of swans has increased, but the proportion of juveniles is kind of slightly decreasing.
There's a lot of opportunity for predators to get a hold of these birds. Some predators would include northern pike, snapping turtles, birds of prey. Those are kind of their main predators. And then there's also, you know, weather, many other factors that can affect survival. Well, one of the things that we're anticipating or could anticipate, um, you know, wind energies and one of those things that may be cropping up in the sand hills and it has in, in one or two spots. And with that, you have a lot of transmission lines and so forth. And some of those things may be cutting across some of the wintering areas that these birds use. And so what would that do for those swans? Uh, where you put those transmission lines are really important because if you put them next to a key wintering ground, you know, these birds didn't evolve with big, long, thick wires spanning across the sky, you know, so um, that can be a, a death trap. First time I saw a trumpeter swan was probably in the late 60s at La Creek up there north of Merriman. My name's A.B. Cox and I live on Calf Creek Ranch. This is Calf Creek, uh, north of Mullen, Nebraska in southern Cherry County. I'm Shelley Kelly. I grew up uh, by Brewster, Nebraska on a ranch, family operation, and uh, just always loved the sand hills. The trumpeter swan is kind of a iconic species because it sticks out so much. People pay attention to the swans and even ranchers that have lived here their whole lives, uh, like myself. When we see a trumpeter swan, it's really exciting. What we do know is if we have a healthy landscape, we know that it's better for the swans. It's not a competing interest. You know, wildlife and, and ranching, they're not on different hands. They share the same goals. Those ranchers have been real good stewards of this landscape because they need good grass too. You know, in a way, they're grass farmers. We just see it as we are trying to be good stewards and leave it as best we can. I care about these birds because they're remarkable. I think about what would the world look like if they weren't in it, you know? To me, it'd be a um, pretty boring place. It's a real conservation success story. That's because of an awful lot of people that are dedicated their lives and their efforts to help bring these birds back. So it's a pretty cool deal, but there's no finish line in conservation, and um, so we have to keep keep thinking about these birds and what they represent and, and um, really celebrate them so we can have them around for a long time. Thank you.